And welcome to another edition of LiRAS. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is the show where we demystify technology and make it more understandable for you and your grandma and your cousins and your dog. Uh, explain difficult terms and teach us stuff along the way. You can teach my dog. You'd be surprised. Your dog is going to love to find out about touchscreen technology today. I don't even have a dog. <laughs> but you could and it would learn. I got to get one now. There you go. Okay. All right. So today on the show, I have a little riddle. What does the iPad, this touch technology, have in common with chocolate spread and marshmallow spread? I don't know, but I sense that we're going to need the plastic wrap. We will need the plastic wrap. Yeah. Today on the show, we're going to do a little food demo to show you how touch screens work. Right? You know, I mean, the whole world's been filled with touch screens these days. They've been around for uh, actually uh, probably more than 10 years, mm -hmm. probably 20 years even. Uh, but they've obviously matured. We're going to talk about the touch screen on the Apple iPad, on the iPhone. We talk about you know, t two different technologies. We're going to demonstrate how they work using food. Oh no! It's a famous food demo here on Lab Rats. <laughs> you looking forward to this? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. All right. All right. Just... Let's take a break. Oh, where are you going? <laughs> plastic wrap. Okay, good. Yes, and the biohazard suits. Yes. All right, so let's take a break when we come back. Uh, how touch screens work using food today on Lab Rats. Well, we, before we get started with the, uh, the grocery mayhem, I uh, want to mention uh, quickly our uh, uh, friends at uh, VeriSign, you know, the trust company, that, uh, the, the guardians of .com and uh, .tv and other uh, domains uh, or first level domains. These guys have this fantastic contest going on called HowDoYou.com. It's the 25th anniversary of the .com uh, extension. It's been a while. It's been a while. And, uh, and they're offering uh, prizes up to 10000 bucks in cash, plus iPad, iPads, and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. If you tell your .com story, how does the dot, how does the, the .com change your life? Um, and I know, of course, I mean, in a recent show, I talked about how it changed my life. How did it change your life? Well, uh, for me, it was an issue. Back, uh, back in the day, I was using email addresses. It was always somebody else's email addresses, so my name at such and such a service. And it's just kind of, you know, not as professional as it maybe could be. So at a certain point, I said, you know what? I'm registering my own domain. So I registered globalhermit.com, which has been my nickname for a while. Yeah. And uh, then not only did I put up a site where you could see some of my writing, it's a little bit out of date right now, yeah. um, but you see some of my writing, some of my photographs, some of my old photographs are still up there. Right. Um, but the, the key thing for me was email. So now I actually had a Sean at globalhermit.com address, yeah. and now it was professional. So as Global Hermit, the, the business, I could actually solicit material or solicit jobs from, from uh, people. I could do writing assignments for them, and I looked like a real business now, right, right. rather than Sean at Hotmail.com. It's just like, that doesn't look professional at all. So it. it made me look more professional. It's like, like, a, like a branding yeah. experience. It's a branding yeah. experience. Give so. you a presence on the web. Yeah, it, it, it looks much better. That's so good. That's what I did. So it changed your life drastically. It changed my life. So yeah. I became a world famous, I don't world even know World famous what that means. Andy Walker tolerator. Yeah, so that's probably it. There you go. Good stuff. Okay, so don't forget, you can uh, wander over to howdoyou.com, uh, tell your story, and you could win thousands, a thousand, 10,000 bucks, and, or an iPad, and all kinds of other things. So check that out uh, from our friends at Verisign, howdoyou.com. All right, let's get on with yeah. the mayhem. I want to know what you have in mind here, sir, because I have no clue what this is all about. Okay, so, you know, the touchscreen world has become, has exploded in the last few years, thanks in large part to, to Apple, of course. Mm -hmm which has sort of popularized the multi-touch screen on both their iPhone, the iPod Touch, and also the iPad more, more recently. Right, but that wasn't the first uh, touch screens that no. were out there. No, I mean, if you go back, I mean, even back into the early 90s, you know, uh, Palm Pilot had one mm -hmm. of the very first touch screen technologies. But, you know, the, the technology, there's actually, we're going to talk about two different types of technologies today uh, mm -hmm. around touch. In fact, there's three, so we're going to demonstrate two, and I'll mention the third one towards okay. the end. But let's start, talk about something that's been around for a while. Mm -hmm. It's called resistive touch technology. Okay. And resistive, resistive technology is really ideal for stylus-based um, systems or right. systems where you're not going to physically touch, don't necessarily going to physically touch the screen. Okay, so this is going back to the palm where we actually had a little stylus and we were sitting there acting as if it was like a pen or the Newton back to another Apple product. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the great thing about resistive technologies is that it's very accurate. Mm -hmm. So it can accurately you know, uh, detect a point. Um, downside is that you kind of have to calibrate it. Right. So and if you remember on the Palm Pilot, you kind of had to go touch, touch, touch to say, hey, this is how this is. So let me show you how that works because it's kind of a, a cool technology. So there's two conductive layers. Now we've got fajitas here. We're using that. 
um, for a top and a bottom, right? right. And so, so, and when I say conductive, it means that something that is actually going to be, uh, is going to actually take electricity, right? Or mm -hmm. transmit electricity. So transmit it from, from one the top layer, layer to the other? From layer to the, to the other one. Okay, how do now, we do that? Well, there's an, there's an air gap between the top layer and the bottom, or what's called the microdot layer, mm -hmm. right? That actually sep is a separator in there. You know, today we're gonna just use um, uh, marshmallow cream to demonstrate the air gap, just to give it a physical separation. So let's, okay. uh, if you can help me with that, just spread that out over All right. there. Put a whole layer. Eww. Nice. It's probably more efficient if you use your hands. Here, take some more. All right. So the idea here is that we just pro pro producing an air layer here between the two. Uh, just now, I want visually represented. Uh, you're not having a very much success. There. No, this is a little bit sticky. But okay. I think I think we sort of got there. You got most got most of the way there. Yeah. All right. It's, it's sort of like gum. <laughs> it's kind of gum. Okay, good. So right. as you can see, and Johnny, we want to pop on over here and have a look a little closer. Uh, to that. So, of course, this represents the air gap, and we're just doing this, you know, for a visual representation. It's actually going to air, it's going to be little dots that will actually support, separate the two layers. But uh, this will give us a, a landing point for the next thing that I'm going right. to shoot. So, so, I've got some Nutella here, and this is, of course, chocolate hazelnut spread. Uh, I think this is the generic version, but you may know it as Nutella where you live. So, I'm going to take it's, some of that out. That's not what it looks like, but let's not talk about that. <laughs> that's right. So, I'm going to spread that out. Now, the reason I'm doing this is actually, you know, there is no Nutella in your resistive touchscreen, um, even though perhaps you might think that that may be the case because I'm putting it on here. So, but I tell you what, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to give you a demonstration of where our touch is going to land. Okay. So, so now, so we have, I'm going to flip this over here. So we have two layers. Remember we talked about two layers, top layer and the bottom layer. Okay. And Sean, you're, you're going to use your finger as a, um, as a stylus. Okay. Okay. And we're going to put this over top here, and I want you to basically touch a point there in the middle of the Nutella, wherever it would be, and just to make a landing point, right? Okay. And I'm, I'm going to pop it. that off. And it's actually not bad. So as you can see here, that Sean's uh, Sean's touch has actually created a little impact here, or actually on the, on the white cream here, it's actually brown on white. Mm -hmm. Remember, we're talking about the white as our air gap. So we've connected the top layer with the bottom layer. Yes. And the system is basically registering that as a hit, and it's triangulated because it now knows because the electricity has flowed from one po one point to another through through the system. Right now, obviously, this is a one use only because now we've got our Nutella in our marshmallow and our marshmallow in our Nutella. So right. In the real world, when you untouch it, it it un yeah. So it's basically touching the layers together and sensing it. Right. But then you okay. could let's see if we can do it. Yeah. No, yeah, it's not no, going to work. Just a mess. Anyway, well, okay, so we try. But you get, you get the idea, right? The good news is we have lunch now for later. Mmm, delicious. We can actually feed the camera people. Want a, a burrito wrap there? There you go. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> you want it? There you go. go, John. Delicious. All right, so that's the resistive, resistive technology. As I said again, it's good for uh, um, if you can't physically touch the, the screen, so in cold weather, for outdoor usage, that sort of thing, mm. um, and great, great for styluses and that sort of thing. Right. However, but when you touch your finger to that, your real finger to that, it doesn't really do a whole lot. No, your nail might work, but your, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, so in terms of touching a screen with your hands, this is the technology that Apple uses on, on their various devices. Yeah, so and let's, this is a little yeah, more, more challenging here. I so might have noticed that if you actually use, a, uh, if you use a, a stylus on this, it doesn't do anything. Correct, yeah. Because so. there has to be some, uh, and this is called um, capacitive. This technology. Oops, easy, easy. Don't hurt the lights. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. So capacitive technology works slightly differently. All right. So it is. It's the based based on attracting electricity mm -hmm. or not attracting electricity. So I'm gonna. I've got a. This is our um, screen here. That's our, that's a really. I can see why Apple uh, just considered this the prototype. So I'm just gonna pour electricity into our onto our screen here. So. You know, uh, Apple will flow the electricity across the screen, um, and as you can see, it, it is it's kind of flowy, right? That's a lot of electricity there. It's a lot of electricity. Okay. Okay. So now, what happens is, the electricity is flowing, and the system is saying, "Well, it's flowing normally. It's got detectors on this. Nothing's happening. No touch um, event has occurred." Okay. Okay. Now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a banana, which is nice and mushy, like a finger and changes the way that electricity, it actually will attract electricity as you, as you touch it. Now, you don't feel a zap, right? Mm -hmm. It's a very, very low, low uh, current. It's not going to impact you. Okay. So I want you to pick 
if you can, pick this up. This is why we have the plastic around, right. folks. Pick this up, right? So now, oops. So now that's going to flow, right? Now it's flowing around. And what happens is when I push, put my finger, everything flows towards the touch point. So you pull it tight. Oops. Oh. Try not to get on the camera. And as I, as I hit the touch point, it flows. <laughs> Out the side of the screen and onto <laughs> yeah, everything. Yeah, so Apple's very clever. They stop the flowing outside of the screen, of course. Um, but uh, as you get, so you get the idea, right? So you're touching it. It's yeah. flo all the inf all the uh, electricity is flowing towards your conductive so, finger, so. right? And Apple is registering this as a uh, as a touch event. So it creates a little singularity in the space time of the the screen, and everything flows. <laughs> flows. Out. There you go. That's very good. Very very, uh, very uh, uh, physics of you. <laughs> All right. Now, Apple does a, a little, an extra little trick. There's a grid across its screen, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, so it actually can measure between two touch events. Because in this particular case, you know, you're touching. In, there's a multi-touch functionality, right? So I can right. touch in two places. So the the, the flow is It'll uh, flow in a couple different directions. Yeah. Then. Come on in here, John, and I'll show you exactly. So watch. I'm so not I put, lifting this up again. No, no. Right? So I put uh, two fingers on this time and watch. So there's uh, an impact on the actual flow of the electricity here. Right? So Apple can actually measure that, and it has a grid system that, uh, that flows the, the energy through it, mm -hmm. and then a, a sensor that actually shows where you're, you're actually touching. Yeah, now if you, if you actually look at your device at, a, at an oblique angle with the light in the background, you actually see the grid on, on there as well. So with, with the Apple devices, it's nice and uh, it's like a checkerboard, and when you look at it, it's not something like an Android device, you can see the same sort of thing. On right. one of their touchscreen devices, uh, the Nexus One is actually diagonal. But the same sort of grid, same kind of idea, yeah. exactly. And so this, it's, all, it's basically, and it can measure between the touch points. You can actually map the touch points, uh, the size, the direction. Now you're going to be moving and gesturing and that kind of thing. So it's such a very clever technology. Now, uh, it does not use uh, cranberry juice um, Thank and or bananas. It uses your finger and electricity. Um, the other thing I wanted to want to mention here too is there is a there is a, a third technology that you will uh, maybe read about called acoustic wave technology. And again, that's, uh, that uses uh, ultrasonic sound waves that flows across the surface of something. Ah! Something like ah! That. <laughs> yeah, something like that, except it's a little higher in terms of, so you won't actually hear it. And there are microphones ah! in the corner of the actual device that will actually pick up the sound waves. So when you put anything in the way of those sound waves, it disrupts the flow of the sound waves, mm -hmm. and then it does a calculation to figure out where the touch point has occurred. Um, so, but you'll, there's, uh, those, uh, you'll see um, touch screens on computers that actually mm. use that technology. But I think multi-touch is the future and, you know, obviously this capacitive technology is going to be around for a while. Yes. So there you go. That is how uh, uh, touch screens work using food. Uh, total sum price of this uh, food demo was, I think, $37.22, uh, including the cleanup uh, news, uh, paper. So you can do this at home, too, for your, uh, for your kids and your grandma. <laughs> Uh, just be careful not to get the cranberry, so cranberry juice in your eyes because it'll, it'll sting. Yeah, and make sure your wife isn't home because she won't appreciate this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, there you go. So let's take a break, and when we come back, uh, a clip of the week and uh, picture time. That's after this. Easy. Well, while Sean is cleaning up, let's take a look at a, quip, a clip of the week. Uh, Andrew McCrispin has been looking at the iPad. We have a fantastic series on how to use the iPad effectively, so check that out, and when we come back, picture time. Why do I always have to clean up this mess? Because you're, you're not me. <laughs> welcome on deck, I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A-List. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. You can also get your first look at the on-screen keyboard. In this configuration, we can um, hold it in our hands like this and actually type with our thumbs. If we're quite careful, we can also touch type like this. However, if we were to turn the screen orientation lock off, flip the device into landscape, we'll get a, a view of the um, larger keyboard. Now, this one's much easier to type on if you're actually looking to, uh, to do some serious typing here. To see that entire series, uh, check out butterscotch.com. Andrew Moore Christmas done a great job putting that together. If you want to learn about your iPad and how to use it, there's, uh, I think, 10 parts, isn't there? Something like that. Something like that. Lots of lots There's of a lot. There. Okay, good. Um, by the way, I, I really want to use marshmallow goo a lot more in demos. It's very tasty. No? You disagree? Um, it, looks, it looks like you're like chewing on paste or something It's like delicious, that. though. It's delicious. <sighs> no. No. Okay. All right, so food demos can be tasty as well as informative, as you can tell. 
All right, uh, picture time. We do have picture time. Oh, by the way, yes. I, I saved that uh, burrito. I, I actually stole it back from John. You want to take a bite? Not really, no. Oh, come on. It's good for you. It was on the floor? Mmm, you're good. Here, have some. Uh, I got picture time to do, unfortunately. Oh, no. All, right. All right, so first up, oh, we God. have... Insulin shock. <laughs> All right, so first up, from Sammy, who's in the Maldives. Mm -hmm. uh, all the way oh, to the other Sammy side of the, the Maldives. Yeah. I love Sammy in the Maldives. I actually emailed him because he's, I want to go diving in the Maldives. Yes. Um, and he apparently works at a resort. So, Sammy, tell me where you work so I can come and dive. Yeah, this is out in uh, the Indian Ocean, right? Yeah, not far off the, off the coast of Sri Lanka in India. There we go. So, this is uh, Sammy's setup, and he's got a uh, few different screens here, all running Lab Rats and or Butterscotch uh, products. Very good. Do you think they have uh, marshmallow chocolate burritos in the Maldives? Uh, I'm sure if you uh, write ahead, uh, They'll, they'll, they'll do it for me here. Yeah. Little or you can, bar. You can pack up. <laughs> we have uh, our friend uh, Quinn in Calgary, and Quinn is by himself this time, uh, although he is with himself. There's the Quinn twins. Two, two Quins. Quinn twin Quins. There you go. Very nice. Very so good. Quinn, thank you for sending that along. Thank you, Quinn. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Quinn, That's you win a half-eaten marshmallow chocolate banana uh, burrito. Don't do it. No. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for uh, Lab Rats. Don't forget uh, to check out all kinds of other content on butterscotch.com, um, our contest, howdoyou.com. Zip on over there, go see the, the good folks at VeriSign, the trust company, and uh, tell your story about how the .com domains changed your life. Uh, you know, fundamentally changed Sean's life, my life, and I'm sure you have a story too. So maybe, uh, maybe you bought your dog online, maybe uh, you bought your mattress online, maybe you, I don't know, you learn how to shoot photographs online. Maybe you uh, watch somebody uh, eat, eat, eat marshmallow a marshmallow and chocolate burrito burritos. online and it turned you off of food for the rest of your life. That's right. 25th anniversary of the dot-com domain. Uh, uh, so check that out, uh, howdoyou.com, and you can win 10000 bucks for an iPad. All right, well, that's it for us this week. You know, it would be foolish for us to be here with Marshmallow Goo and Nutella if you weren't out there thinking about um, why you want to learn about technology thanks to food. Are you okay there, Mr. Carruthers? It's delicious. It's delicious. I can't do it. <laughs> do it. All right, well, my name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Do it. Ah, ah. Are you ready? I don't like the looks of this. I like the looks of this. I think it's gonna be fun. I think I need a firmer fajita. This one's a bit mushy. A little bit mushy, yeah. This one's mushy's not good. Bloop. Only we shot these in stereoscopic 3D. That's right. Yeah. 3D today on Lyra. So should speak much, we should do 3D. We should.